Hey, hey, and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. This is Chad from Essential Worship, and this week I'm going to show you how to set up a virtual sound check on a Mac Mini that is also running Super Rack Performer. Hey, 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 what do you say? Yes, it's that time again. It's Tech Tuesday. All right, so this is a pretty specific video based off of the videos we've been doing the past few weeks. So a really quick recap. Um, we've got the Behringer Wing. We recently installed the Waves internal sound card and set up a sound grid network um, with the Mac Mini M4. The Mac Mini has been awesome. It's the base model $500 Mac Mini. Um, and it is running 64 channels of audio back and forth from the wing, and it's recording 64 channels in a recording program at the same time. So what I'm going to show you today is how to do a virtual sound check from that Mac to itself, which is kind of a tricky thing to do. So let's hop right in. Uh, I'm going to assume that you've already watched the other video. If not, I'll put a link in the description and at the end of this video. But assuming you already have audio flowing back and forth, between your mixer and your Mac Mini, now you can set up the recording. First off, you're gonna need some sort of recording program. Um, I'm gonna be using Studio One for today's example. Um, a few things I like about Studio One is one, it works really well in this low resolution mode. Um, I've got a touch screen, I want it to have big buttons that I can press, and Studio One does a really good job with that. So um, you can see I've got some macros for live mode and virtual sound check mode. I'll talk more about those in a moment here. But the important thing is whatever program you use needs to give you the option to have a separate playback device from your recording device. Um, so what we're going to do in here is our recording device is going to be Wave SoundGrid, meaning whatever is coming into the SoundGrid network is recording onto the Mac Mini. Uh, and then we're going to take it and then send it through using a program called Black Hole. Uh, real quick, before I start talking about Black Hole, Part of the reason why we're doing this, uh, if you've watched my old video uh, where I set up the SD card recorder, you can still do that. The problem is that because with the SoundGrid network, we can receive audio from other computers. So in my previous video, I had a MacBook Pro set up. I was sending 16 channels of audio, not through the wing, but through Ethernet, through the SoundGrid network, into the Mac Mini, processing it through SuperRack Performer, and then sending it to the wing. That's great, but if you record that audio from the wing, you would technically be recording the audio that has already been processed. It wouldn't be the raw audio like you normally want to do for virtual sound check. By doing this, what we're doing today, we're recording the raw audio on the Mac Mini, so we have the raw channels, and it's just easier to manipulate than it is from the wing. On the wing, you can't really see the waveforms. You can't grab just an individual file. They're kind of grouped in these 32-channel file structures. Um, this is just a lot easier to work with, and it frees up your wing to do other kinds of recordings with the SD cards, which we'll talk about in a future video. So with that said, as I mentioned, our playback device is going to be Black Hole 64. If you're not familiar with Black Hole, there'll be a link in the description. It is donationware, so you can download it for free. They suggest a $10 donation. It's worth it. It's pretty awesome. It's a uh, virtual uh, audio interface. So you can send audio from one program to another without using any kind of cables or hardware, uh, which is awesome. So you're going to need that. Then you're also going to need a software called Loopback. Loopback is not free. It's $99. Um, you can download it for free, and it'll work for, I think it's 10 or 20 minutes at a time before you have to reset it. Um, so for virtual sound check, you might just be doing really quick checks, you know, before you get into something, or like I said, you can reset this or you can purchase, uh, the $99 version. But the way you're going to set this up, when you first open loop back, it's going to look something like this. Um, what I found is the best way to do this is click on your pass through and delete for your output channels. Click this plus button a whole bunch of times until you get 64 outputs. Then on your sources, click the plus button and select black hole 64. Now we've got audio routed one to one from there. And in Studio One, let me demonstrate this real quick. 
As I mentioned earlier, one thing I like about this is you can do macros. So we're currently in live mode, meaning that we're receiving audio because every channel is record armed, but it's not going anywhere. It's all just staying in Studio One because we have the mute button selected for each one. With my macro I have set up on here, when I go to virtual sound check mode, it turns off the record arm, so we're no longer receiving audio, but it unmutes every channel so we can now send that audio. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play on here. We got a loop going. In loop back, you can see we have audio being passed through. That's great. You can now close loop back and you don't have to deal with it anymore. If you hit that 10 or 20 minute time limit, it'll open back up and give you a chance to reset everything. All right, next you need to set up the audio MIDI setup. So if you're not familiar with where to go on that, top right hand corner with the magnifying glass for spotlight, type in the word MIDI, and then there's your audio MIDI setup. It should sh start with this menu that says audio devices. If not, go up to window, and if it says show audio devices, click on that. Now this gives you a list of all your audio in and out devices. So if you see, for example, Wave Sound Grid, 64 in, 64 out. Black Hole, 64 in, 64 out. Loop back, look at this, 64 in, zero out. So this is important because what we want to do is create a device, a virtual device, that combines two of these interfaces together. And the ending result is that we need the 64 inputs to be coming from essentially Studio One, but the 64 outputs need to be going back to the SoundGrid network so we can get the audio into our Behringer wing or whatever interface you're using. So to do that, bottom left hand corner, click the little plus icon and create aggregate device. You can keep it called aggregate device or I'm gonna call it VSC for virtual sound check. And then over here on the right hand side, you can pick what audio interfaces are gonna be combined in that. The order is very important. So we're gonna start with loopback, and then next we'll scroll down to wave sound grid. And if you look over here, we have this weird 128 inputs, 64 outputs. So the 64 outs are exactly correct. They're gonna to go to the sound grid network. Because we clicked loopback first, that is what the 64 inputs that um, Studio Rack will be reading will be coming in from. You can now go ahead and close this. Let's open up our Super Rack Performer. All right, once you're in Super Rack Performer, go up to Setup and change your device from Sound Grid to VSC or whatever you named it. Now when we go to Overview, you can see we've got audio coming in. If I go to my wing, you can see I've got audio coming in here. Just to prove that it's coming from Studio One, if I go back to Studio One and turn this off, no audio in Super Rack, and therefore no audio in the wing. This is just my, uh, vir um, my oscillators playing, and then you can see I got my mic on channel. Uh, and there you go. That's how you set up Super Rack Performer to have a virtual sound check from the same Mac Mini M4. One final thing, very, very, very important. When you're done, make sure to go back to Super Rack Performer, set up, and put your device back to the Waves sound grid, and also verify that your buffer size is correct. For me, that's 32. If you forget to do this, and if you don't set up these macros in Studio One or whatever recording program you're using, you can still potentially send audio in real time through your recording program and then into Super Rack. And if you're in a large enough room, you might not feel that delay when you hear it you know, at front of house, but your musicians, if they're hearing this audio, they're gonna really feel, I hit the snare, and then a moment later I hear it, which is gonna really mess them up. So that's why I do these macros. So for me, again, switching Super Rack to back to Sound Grid, and then in Studio One, being in live mode, now I've muted that audio so it's not passing through, uh, and that's gonna guarantee that I'm only hearing the live audio going straight through Super Rack into the wing. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Until next time, have a great week. Again, this is Chad from Ascension Worship. I hope this has been helpful for you and your team. Come back here every Tuesday for new information.